much. Um, I don't want to take much time. I just want to thank everyone for being here. And now uh, it is my great honor uh, to introduce the Honorable Professor Charles Ogletree, who will be presiding over the testimony that you will hear uh, this afternoon. I also very briefly, um, I want to thank Harvard um, so much for having us in this wonderful institution, in this incredible Sanders Hall uh, to celebrate this occasion. Uh, the Berkman Center here for Internet and Society uh, has been a beacon of light for us in terms of guiding us and grounding um, our work and our foundation in, um, in a you know, tremendous amount of, of research. We appreciate that very much. I'd like to thank uh, Dean Kathy McCartney. Uh, it started with she and I basically having a discussion about maybe having uh, a little event here, you know, at Harvard, uh, and it turned uh, into this. And I uh, sincerely want to thank Miss Oprah Winfrey for believing in us uh, and for being part of this launch. So uh, with that, uh, the Honorable Professor Charles Ogletree. Oh, How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's such an honor to be here today at this uh, historic event with the great uh, Oprah Winfrey and with Lady Gaga and her mother as well. And I have five terrific people who are going to be asking questions in a court-type setting of Lady Gaga. She's going to be on trial. She needs many lawyers. Uh, but if she doesn't have any, I think she'll do very well herself. Let me first introduce the great panelists coming here today. First, I want to introduce the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services for the United States of America, Kathleen Sebelius. How are you? Thank you. Very pleased to have with us today the great spiritual leader and a great scholar. Please welcome Dr. Deep uh, Deepak Chopra. We're very pleased to have someone who represents what this is all about, a young woman who's done an incredible job. She's very shy, very nervous. Show her some love. Please welcome Alyssa Rodemeyer. give us some of the sense of the psychological impact of all this talk we're going to have today. Please welcome Professor Sue Swearer. <laughs> and finally, very, very pleased to uh, invite to the stage a proud parent and a great person who understands and symbolizes all this. Please welcome David Bertko. And now what I'd like to do is to make sure that we're in the proper spirit for this, and so the court's in session. <laughs> Lady Gaga, welcome. Let me ask the first question if I can. I You've have heard. no attorney today, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're just in trouble. Do I have to oath? <laughs> We'll do this without the oath, just in case you go a little far from okay. the spill, right? Okay. But, uh, tell us uh, what you're trying to do, empowering youth uh, and the whole idea of dealing with bravery. What is the goal of uh, Born This Way? The goal of the Born This Way Foundation is to uh, challenge meanness and cruelty by inspiring young people to create a support system in their respective communities. So what this is all about is saying, the power is in your hands. How can we come together with the greatest experts in the world, you, <laughs> and come up with all of the amazing ways that we can inject love, acceptance, and tolerance into uh, culture. What's your sense in terms of your own background, having gone through this as a victim of violence yourself, what's your sense about how that message is going to be impacted by other people as well? 
Well, one of the most important things that I wanted to uh, bring up today was that there really is a, sort of a focus on the victim, right? But what I want to point out today, even though this is a, not an anti-bullying charity, is that the victim and the bully are on the same playing field. We're, de we're dealing in both senses with someone who's going through a tremendous amount of mental turmoil. And how do we say you are both equal members of society, you are both equal mem members of culture, how do we not just save the victim, but also save the bully? How do we prevent the tragedies before they happen? I want the Born This Way Foundation through its three pillars of um, skills, safety, and opportunity to come up with the greatest ways that we can to empower youth all over the world. And the first empowered youth is Alyssa. Well, I, I want to start this session as we can. Alyssa, you want to ask the first question to Lady Gaga? Okay, uh, Lady Gaga, most of these kids are really self-conscious and your goal is to empower youth. How can you help change the way kids feel about themselves? Because self-consciousness self is something that's really deep-rooted. It is really deep-rooted and you know what? It's so interesting that you asked me that because I can't tell you that's probably the most frequently asked question that I get all the time from lots of young people. And the problem is, is that we don't have the answer. The answer to the question is, how do we create a support system around every single human being that can help you or help anyone build confidence in themselves by having friends, family, teachers that can uh, really, really focus on the community and say, this person needs help, this person needs love, this person needs acceptance, this person needs tolerance. How can we foster one another's individuality? So it's a very big overarching issue. It's not as simple as saying, you know, be yourself, love who you are, which is something that I've learned because I, I toot that at my shows all the time, right? <laughs> but it's not that simple. The answer is we have to work from the ground up and create a climate and an environment in schools where someone that feels self-conscious has someone walk up to them in the middle of class and say, you know, I really liked your essay. Little things like that, little acts of kindness, these are the things that are going to change culture. Okay, um, now my next question kind of has two different parts. Um, with all due respect, what makes you think you have all the answers to change such a big problem? <laughs> and how would you like me, as a young person and the voice of the youth, to make a difference? It's really hard to be brave, as you know. It is hard to be brave. And the answer is I don't have all the <laughs> answers. <laughs> In fact, I, I have very few. I, um, I'm someone that is very passionate, and what I would like for you to do is be just one of many examples. I would like for there to be many of you, Alyssa. I wish there were hundreds of you. You're a wonderful, wonderful girl, and my dream in the future would be to have someone like Alyssa in every school around the country, someone who can be an ambassador for the Born This Way Foundation, if you will. Someone that really monitors the climate of the school and can be a litmus test for violence, bullying, kindness, love, acceptance. Thank you very much, Alyssa. Thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Dr. Chopra, you want to give us uh, some questions you want to ask Lady Gaga about, uh, from the spiritual point of view? Would you like to know from her? Well, do you think it's possible to move in the direction of a peaceful, just, sustainable, healthy, and happier world? And if so, what would it take? <laughs> you can answer any part of that. <laughs> yes, I do believe it's possible. And I think it will take very little. <laughs> well, 
it looks like you obviously see yourself as a global leader. So. Well, this is, it, you know, I know you want me to see myself as a global leader <laughs> because I know you. <laughs> 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 um, I would like for everyone to see themselves as global leaders. I suppose that would be what I mean when I say you are all born superstars. When I say that it takes very little to change the world, I really mean that. I believe that if each one of us just transformed one small bit of ourselves to be a bit kinder, a bit more loving, a bit more tolerant of even the most minuscule thing, I believe it will be quite easy to change the world. The only problem is there's so damn many of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Swear, you've done a lot of work on the psychology of some of these uh, incidents. Uh, questions you have for uh, Lady Gaga? Well, well, Lady Gaga, as a licensed psychologist on this panel, it's really important for me uh, that everybody here realizes the emotional turmoil that victims of bullying face, as well as the turmoil of those kids who are doing the bullying. I'd like to know from a psychological perspective, from a behavioral health perspective, from uh, just a human perspective, um, do you think you're gonna change the culture where kids are so cruel and mean sometimes that they often just aren't comfortable with being who they were born to be? I don't think I'm going to, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I would say that over time, what I would like to do, working with someone like yourself and working with all of the experts that I've become so excited to hear from that I, I'm hoping that the world undergoes, or the culture rather, undergoes what I have recently learned to be a psychological autopsy. <laughs> I would like to do a psychological autopsy on as many bullies and victims as possible. How do we understand what breeds hatred, what breeds anger, and what are the signs that a youth empowered like Alyssa can pick up on within the school environment and say, hey, something's not quite right. I'm, I'm really happy that you're here today because I recently have been doing uh, some research on violence within schools. And something that I noticed in particular was that in the unfortunate tragedy of Columbine, there were actual uh, very specific signs of violence and hatred even within uh, their schoolwork. It, it ranged from uh, bullying towards the perpetrators as well as um, there being actual uh, signs very early on of, of violent behaviors, violent messaging, uh, violent... Uh, uh, violent tendencies in general. There was an essay written by one of the students that said, I have <laughs> dreams that I X, Y, and Z. And the X, Y, and Z was a blueprint for the tragedy of the day. Why was there not a teacher that read that essay and said something is wrong? Why was there not a student in that school that said there is violent behavior happening in the student body? Why was there not someone in Alyssa's school that said there is violent behavior happening to Jamie? These are the things that I want to really focus on from a scientific, psychological, and uh, research perspective, I think that some of the answers really lie in us being more intelligent about the climate of society. Let me just ask a question, Lady Gaga. Part of this is, is not just the bullying, it's also the bravery. How do we get to the bravery from your point of view? Yes, of course. Well, again, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, this, again, is not focused around bullying. The, the bravery aspect is, is I want for young people to know that they have the power, jeez, I'm terrible at that. I'm not used to doing it with the little mic here. I'm used to it being here or here, you know. Um, how can we inspire young people to know that they have the power to be brave, to be the one to say there is a problem here, I'm noticing that there's an issue. How can it become cool to be the kid that says something's not quite right? 
for whatever reason, there is a sort of blinder of, I go to class, I do my homework, I get uh, my work done, I hand it in to my teacher, I leave, I go hang out with kids after school. There needs to be attention that is paid to looking for signs and being an aware person that wants to be safe, wants to have the skills to be loved, to, to love, to accept, to be accepted, to be tolerant, to foster individuality, and know that the opportunity is yours to change. Thank you. This fits right in with uh, David Berker. No, no one can be braver than what he's had to experience as a young man and as a father, a parent of two children. Uh, David, can you, you want to ask us some questions, particularly about the bravery context in the braver world? Right. Lady Gaga, I'm a big proponent of you and what you do, and as an out gay husband, father of twins and a teen that was bullied relentlessly. I don't need, any, I don't need much coaching on um, coach, uh, co coaxing to appreciate your point of view. But uh, how do you plan on getting your message to the large segments of the population that are not so open-minded? That's a very good question. Well, right now we are working with Blue State Digital, which is one organization that we are partnering with to work on creating a social media environment that really fosters these ideas. And uh, we are also working on, with many new experts on generating, I don't like the word programs. Let me think of another one. Awareness. Sessions. Awareness. 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 <laughs> Gatherings, gatherings, summit, uh, organized meetings, the Born Brave Bus is an example of a place where I would like people to convene, where they can talk about these sorts of things. Uh, I want it to become cool to be aware about life, be aware about society, be aware about violence. Uh, in particular, in your case specifically, I want it to be part of the natural fabric of schooling that someone knows that it is, it is not okay to be intolerant of your children. It is not okay to be unaccepting. It is not okay to be violent because you don't understand. <laughs> Also, um, one of my concerns is making sure my children always feel safe to be themselves. But it's not always easy. Um, so how are you or the foundation going to make childhood a safer place, given all the social networking tools out there to make children feel unsafe or vulnerable? Well, I'm not going to. How's you are. Me. My children. You are. The point of the foundation is to say, parents, kids in school, it, 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 it's, we need to go from the bottom up, but the model is you. It's okay to say, you can't use that website, or you shouldn't be on that program, or this kind of language is inappropriate, or stay away from... Educating your kids about social media today is, a, is as important as, as anything. And uh, un unfortunately, which, which is so interesting, I just real, I was reading about um, all of the statistics in relation to bullying. Uh, people think that cyberbullying is like, you know, the major thing that's happening right now. And truthfully, it's really not. It's the most visible because you can copy and paste something and view it. But the worst bullying in th that you can experience is face-to-face, -face, on the street, in school. Uh, so I, I believe, truthfully, that it is about the parents really, really being strong and, and very, very direct with their kids about what it means to be loving and accepting. If you, if you teach your kids to, to love everyone and be accepting of everyone, hopefully that will, that will over time, uh, branch out. But the truth is that there is really no one answer. And, I, and there's no, there is no law that can be passed. I wish there was, because you know I'd be chained naked to a fence somewhere trying to pass it. <laughs> but, 
but how will you get to the parents? Well, how will I get to the parents? The, the foundation aims to spread this message of love and, and acceptance and bravery as much as we can through the kids, through the bus, through Blue State Digital and media, and we're continuing to develop ideas with all of the different experts that we're working with. So the idea is that this really isn't an overnight thing. This is a cultural change and movement that's meant to be transformative and take place over time. And, you know, it could be 50 years from now, but if I'm dead, I don't give a shit. You know, I just, I just hope it happens. I just hope it happens. I, I know there's some people here in the audience uh, who've left their labs and left their offices who are the researchers uh, who are doing very important work that's going to influence this. What's your message to the researchers? What would you like them to do and why are they so important in what you're trying to do? Give me all your information. <laughs> I'd like for all of you to know that you are the most valuable asset to all of us. and. This foundation is not a, a closed forum. I'm not excited about being the best foundation in the world. It's not about that. I want to uh, work with as many of you as I can. Uh, use me. Use me. If you, if, you, if you discover something tremendous, if the research that you're doing is, is leading uh, a particular study in a different direction, help us to understand what we can do on a completely grassroots level to spread that message. I really believe that so much of the Born This Way Foundation is about information. People don't have the information, and if we don't have the information, we can't spread the message. I'm going to go to uh, Secretary Sebelius in just a minute, but I want to go back to uh, Dr. Swearer in the sense from the psychological point of view. What would you like Lady Gaga to be thinking about? What, what's the next question you want to present to her? Yeah, I mean, what will the Born This Way Foundation do to kind of bring light to really, you talked about the mental anguish that all kids involved in, you know, aggressive and, and mean behavior experience. So. Well, I will probably pull you aside after and ask you. <laughs> you know, the truth is that we don't have all the answers and what we're looking to do is bring someone like yourself and psychologists worldwide together to figure out the best way to formulate a system, a, a criteria. Uh, right now the messaging is love, acceptance, bravery. We have SSO, which is for skills, for safety, for opportunity, but we are going to delve further into this issue and, and figure out all of the ways that we can develop a psychological checklist, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mental turmoil is very serious. It, it, it comes in so many different forms. Depression being one of them. Depression is probably one of the most widespread uh, forms of turmoil that many of us experience. I really want to become as educated as I can about the issue, but more, more importantly, I think the more kids that I can get to eat hamburgers and talk about it outside my show, I really think, you know, it sounds small, but over time, I feel that it will be very big. We're very fortunate to have the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Yes, uh, we are. Uh, and uh, there's a lot from the government, a lot on policy. Uh, Secretary? Well, I think that the question, um, Lady Gaga, that you were just talking about with kids, you know, one of the things, um, and Dr. Swearer probably knows this a lot better than I do, but that the research says is that um, a friend intervening a person intervening uh, in a bullying situation is enormously powerful. It often shuts it down. And you know, when I listen to you talking about the safety and skills and opportunity, how can we, you, all of us, uh, convince kids how powerful they really are, that they really have the power to stop something that they don't like to see, that they don't like going on? What can we do to reach out to I every kid? I think it's about messaging. I think that it's about being innovative in the way that we use technology. 
I also believe that this idea that you know creating a, a sense of acceptance within within the classroom is the sort of thing that will inspire someone to say, um, "Hey, quit beating up on so and so." You know that was a little bit much. What, you know, back off a little bit, or telling a teacher. Uh, it, it's going to take a really long time, and if anyone knows how to get a message out there, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I sort of have a this feeling that if I can, you know, make a song called "Just Dance" really big all over the world, I might be able to make a song that's, you know, just be nice. <laughs> I, know, I know that I keep giving you the same answers to almost all of your questions, but, you know, I, I kind of am doing that on purpose, and I'll explain why. I just, I remember when, well, I don't remember because I wasn't alive yet, but I, I'm obsessed with, uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, and they would say, give peace a chance. And the reporters would shove microphones in their faces and say, explain. And they would just cuddle and say, no. <laughs> but what do you mean by give peace a chance? Give it a chance. It it's, seems so utopian and naive, but you know, it's like a good pop hook. It grabs you right away, and it makes you want to move. Uh, that's what this is all about, a simple idea that I truly believe the world will be a better place, and it won't be so difficult to do so. Just, just come together, tell a friend, do your part, and something wonderful will happen. Well, my understanding is you have about 20 million fans on Twitter, so you can tell a fan a lot stronger than a lot of us can. Um, you talked a little bit about cyberbullying being at least one of the aspects. That's, a, that's a, unfortunately a new phase of bullying that wasn't really there when my kids were growing up. It's a whole new way to um, channel unfortunate hate and disrespect toward one another, but there's also a really powerful social medium that can surround people with love and support. Um, how can you use the social media networks that you have, and clearly the enormous global leader reach that you have, right? Global leader, because you can do this, you can touch people all over the world uh, right now. How does that work for the positive, and how can we all channel that? the positive? Well, you know, I truly believe I have so many followers on Twitter just because I write nice stuff. I know, it's, I know it sounds so simple, but I just, you know, I don't whine, I don't make fun of anybody. I just, I'm just really happy to be here, honestly. <laughs> really happy to be here making music, and I really appreciate anyone that likes my music. So sometimes I think that uh, all of those followers are coming from a place of, you know, everyone likes to get a nice message once a day that says, be yourself, you know, go seize the day. Uh, but I, you know, I, I do, of course, with all of those followers, I also sometimes get really hateful messages, a treme I, tremendous amount of hateful messages, but I don't talk about them because, you know, why give it energy? And on top of... On top of that, I always, I always have a moment of empathy when I read it. I think to myself, man, they must really be going through something today to write something so, I mean, between, uh, I, I don't even want to tell you what they say because they're sometimes just so violent, but the truth is that's also coming from a place of insecurity, that's coming from a place of mental turmoil, that's coming from a place of someone that's having uh, a psychological challenge, and uh, 
I'm not the answer. To, uh, me writing, you know, be a nice person is not going to do anything. Well, what's going to make the change is me as a person, or you, or you, or you, or anyone. Uh, st ignore the negativity and stay positive. And when you see someone being negative to somebody else, it's okay to intervene and stand up for someone that uh, that needs it. It's all about being a support system for humankind. I don't believe that one person can change the world. I believe that humankind as a whole can change the world. Thank you so much. Uh, I've followed not quite your path with these hate messages. I always respond, thank you very much. May God bless you. And they never write again. Uh, See? It. it works, right? <laughs> We're going to change a little bit here. We're going to take three questions uh, from the audience. And let me say before I do that, that a really good question has less than eight words in it. <laughs> so you've got time to think about it, edit it, and come up here. Uh, we're going to have the uh, a, right there in the light. So the first three people, uh, come on around, yellow. Two, go to the stand. Four people. Come on, young lady, you were there. Yeah, you're good. You're right, right back there. And don't ask about her best album or, or it has to be about Born This Way Foundation. See, I just did what Oprah said. I just leaned over to Deepak and said, am I doing okay? <laughs> It's so true. <laughs> so my question is... So your name, too. Oh, my name's Ramsey. From? From Cambridge. Oh, I'm sorry, your name? Ramsey. Ramsey. My question is, why this? Out of every good thing you could do in the world, why this? It just sort of fell right in my lap. I don't know how to explain it. I put out Born This Way, I put out the album, and it was like the influx of dialogue and conversation was more massive than anything. It was the, the thing that I experienced the most. I, I can't even begin to tell you, well, I mean, there's a couple people here even today that these fans have traveled all around the world because they believe in this cause, and it's... It's something that I naturally, my music speaks to it, and, and for whatever reason, this cause just sort of, it sits right here, and it doesn't move. And I don't know how to explain it. It just, wherever I go, make the world a better place, make people more loving, make people more, it's just, it's always with me, and I have to do it. I can't tell you where I got my nerve from, but I, I feel, I believe that if you have revolutionary potential, you must make the world a better place and use it. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Zachary Kerr, and I'm from I'm from Methuen. I go to Methuen High School. Hi, Zachary. Hi. Um, well, I wanted to know um, what does the Born This Way Foundation? What are they going to do about programs? and things that are already in place to empower, uh, to empower youth. Like, um, I'm also transgender, uh, female to male, and at my school we have a really strong GSA. What would the Born This Way Foundation do to support other GSAs and the other programs like that that are already empowering youth? We're going to do everything that we can to support those existing organizations and make sure that they know that we wholeheartedly want to either partner with them or join forces, learn about everything that they're doing and uh, make that part of what we're doing. We don't want to exclude anyone. We want to be extremely knowledgeable about every organization that's out there. And by the way, you look great. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm from Littleton, Massachusetts. It's about Hello. 40 pounds away from here. Hi, how are you? Hi, Alex. Hi. I'm, I'm great, how are you? Great. I'm, th I'm great, thank you. So my question is to you and also to some of the experts we have on stage. What is the best way that we can teach students the tools they need to intervene in instances of bullying? Because as we've said, it's not easy. But how do we go from there? We've identified the issue. 
We've got a lot of people wanting to help out. How do we teach students to do it? I'm going to pass this off to our psychologist. <laughs> Dr. Schwer? Well, I think we need to start with parent training and teacher training and uh, school administrator training so that the adults... <laughs> so that the adults in our system can support the youth movement and can support youth in all of these initiatives. We know that if adults in our system aren't kind and nice, then it's going to be harder for our youth to be. So we Very have quick, to be role models. Can I, can I push back yep. on that a little? Yep. I love you, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> I don't think that works. <laughs> I don't think it works. I don't know that teachers even give a shit, some of them. Not the ones in this room, obviously. <laughs> obviously. What I want is for Alyssa, as the, you know, our resident youth empowered today, I want for someone like Alyssa to be the person that intervenes or the person that uh, talks to other students about intervening. It's not that I don't believe that parents are capable or that I believe that teachers are capable. It's just that we've been talking about this for so long and it's not working. takes to create transformation. You have all the information uh, that's necessary, the tools, and most importantly, you have people like Alyssa and others who can tell stories of success. Yes. And if you have stories of success and you create the conversation, you reach critical mass. You've made it easy. Well, that's the, that's the phone a friend method. <laughs> that's a great one. Uh, Alyssa, would it be possible for you to explain a little bit about what you do at your school? Um, I, um, at my school, I uh, just, I try to set an example. Because without an example, kids don't know what to do. Because kids are very impressionable, especially at young ages and, and especially at our age. And if one kid could set an example, then the rest will follow. On behalf of all of us, Lady Gaga, we're very pleased that you are here. You're very pleased you have Born This Way Foundation, the important work that you're doing. Uh, there's legislation we need to talk about. There's the idea of you. We've already selected her as the next UN ambassador on this issue, right? Do we have a vote? So there's a way to carry this to the next place. And, and my question is this. It's not just a foundation. It's not just an organization. It seems to me this, this is, as you said before, a movement. Yeah. Dr. King had a civil rights movement in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I uh, was warned right? against calling it a foundation. You wanted to call it a movement, right? <laughs> but it is a foundation. Well, you know, I didn't want to be too. <laughs> So where does it go from here? What's your sense? All these folks need some assignments, some responsibilities. What do you want us to do this day forward? I like, I like Deepak's message. Phone a friend. Tell somebody in your life. Tell someone important to you or someone that you don't know. Tell them about love and acceptance and tolerance. Tell them about acquiring skills and feeling safe where they are, knowing that opportunity is at their fingertips. Call upon yourself to know that you are great. Call upon yourself to know that it's not going to be just the experts or the umbrella that's above us that's going to change things. It's going to be all of you. I really hope today that what everyone walks away with is a sense of happiness and bravery, a light outlook on the future and life. Sometimes, especially within our politics and economy, things can feel very, very difficult. We are in a time of where it's very cynical. It's very 
confusing the very little things that you can do on a daily basis to make a more loving impact on the people in your life. These are the very small things that you can do and I'm going to do everything that I can to call all of the greatest people that I know that can reach out to the universe and say, I am loving, I am accepting, I am tolerant, and I am here to spread that message. The website is bornthiswayfoundation.org. We hope you'll take a look at it uh, and continue your questions and dialogues so that we can make some progress. And please email us. And, and tell us your stories. Please share with us your experiences so that we can have all of the information. We want to know what it is that you feel would help. So now, please. I want to bring uh, Lady Gaga's mother back up to the stage as we uh, conclude. We also want to, if you would join me in thanking all of our panelists for their great uh, comments. <laughs> session is closed. <laughs> Your floor. We want to thank you so much and I also want to say that this is, this is the beginning really of a journey that we will all take together. Um, the two of us can't go it alone, uh, which is why we need your help. We, um, I want to very much thank the partners that we have engaged with this foundation. Uh, I'd like to thank Connie Yao from the MacArthur Foundation. I'd like to thank Dr. Ross from the California Endowment. And I'd like to thank uh, John Palfrey and uh, from the Berkman Center. This, we are not philanthropists. My daughter and I are not philanthropists. We don't profess to be. This is about um, harnessing one another and leveraging best practices in this space. We're not I mean, philanthropists, but we're good friends. We're good friends, <laughs> no. But we, we hope to leverage um, her reach and vision with the best practices of these wonderful organizations, as well as yourself and the, your extended communities, your schools, and so on, uh, and, and do this together. So thank you so this very much. This is like the biggest dream come true for my mother and I. This is, this is our first collaboration. collaboration. But I also want... <laughs> to please ask you to check the website. Um, we will be rolling out, I don't know you don't like to say programs, but some very, very specific programs uh, to help you. Um, we Program have, sounds like school. It does, but we have a, parties. A very unique <laughs> a very unique model that will be online. We're creating a digital movement on the road with the, the bus and down the street that will be uh, coming to you, uh, you know, soon in the future. So the, the concept really is that our services uh, are everywhere. And, and, a, and, a, and a friendly ear will be available to you no matter where you are. So um, thank you very well, much and we love you and um, have, a, have an evening of love, acceptance and tolerance and uh, my mom and I are going to go have some wine and celebrate because it was such a success. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much, David. Thank you very much for participating. Susan, thank you so much for participating. Alyssa, you're the best and bravest ever. You're the best role model ever.